record. Yep. Game one tonight against the Washington Wizards. The first game of this playoffs. The first game with this new culture. This I'm excited. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm pumped up. I know Raptors fans are pumped up, and we got this should be a fun series against the Washington Wizards. Yeah. Well, you just said it. Let's speak impartially mm-hmm. as much as we can, of course, um, yeah. for both to both the Raptors and the Wizards. So on that note, the Raptors or sorry, the Wizards are seemingly pumped up as well to have this matchup. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're gonna get into. Yeah, for sure. I know you have the quote on what was it Bradley Beal said about the Toronto Raptors? Yeah, well, there's okay, there's I mean, there's some news around the the media, as of course there would be. Bradley Beal um, says that says we match up very well against mm-hmm. the Raptors. He he doesn't think that it's gonna go down to the X's and O's. He thinks that it's gonna be whoever wants it the hardest. Now. I mean, first thought, as a Raptors fan, I don't necessarily agree. I mean, I think we match up better with them, obviously. Mm -hmm. I think we have a better bench. I don't think that that's undeniable. However, me me and you have talked about how this is the team that we wanted to play. Exactly, of the teams Mm -hmm. that we could have played against. But there is some merit to his point. A John Wallace Wizards team was able to beat the Raptors once a season, and Mm -hmm. then a fully healthy, to an extent, Wizard squad also beat the Raptors. So the season series is tied 2-2. Two to two. By rights, he's right. Yeah. Whatever team plays the hardest could very well win. Also, the Raptors have the issue of underperforming in the first game, even though it's at home. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, hopefully we're going to turn that around this, e- this year, this playoffs. We'll get the monkey off our backs and win the first game. I know I predicted it last game. Hopefully it happens. I ran a poll out on the Twitter. Raptors fans think it can happen, but... History has told us that the Raptors come out not very strong. But Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan actually talked about this almost monkey they have on their backs about the the first game in series. And they said they're going to treat this game like a game seven. Their game one is now their game seven. Cause they do, they, yeah, so, so or, they should. I mean, it shouldn't yeah. take them four years of losing in the first mm-hmm. ra- in the first game of the first round to realize, oh, hey, we got to pick up our... Yeah our performance but i mean the added benefit they also have the bench Mm -hmm. to spur them on if they're playing bad they'll Dwayne casey will just take literally all five of the starters out put the bench in yeah well it's crazy how every game one in raptors history they've lost that's even with vince carter chris bosh all those teams that's that's a wild stat but they say they're going to come out they say it's usually a bit of tightness unease when they go in these games so they vowed quote vowed to change that this Hmm. this game we'll see if that happens uh, some news coming into the game on the Raptors' side. Uh, Fred Van Vliet, he, he hurt his shoulder in the Miami game. He's expected to play. There's not much concern that he won't play, but it might be restricted minutes a little bit. DeLon and Larry might take some more minutes. We need a healthy Fred in the playoffs. Yeah, we 100% do. He's mm-hmm. the clutch guy. He's the anchor of the bench. Yep. I mean, there's not enough th- good things to be said about Fred. Mm-hmm. And However, the, on the other, the Wizards side, yeah. they have Jody Meeks, big suspension. He won't be playing. So I mean, there's pieces on on both teams. For sure. You know that. Well, we, that could be missing. Well, we. Although the, it's indefinite, they'll be missing Jody Meeks. Yeah. Well, we know. Yeah, Jody Meeks is out with apparently breaking a drug rule in the NBA. So it's unfortunate for the Wizards and Wizards fans. But uh, we saw him absolutely decimate the Toronto Raptors one game this season, coming in the fourth quarter and totally shifting the momentum. And the Wizards, that's the one thing about the Wizards. Their starting lineup is great. John Wall, Bradley Beal, Martian Gortat, Otto Porter, Mark Markeith Morris. Like that's a that's a very solid starting lineup. But it's the bench where that's been their issue for a while. And I think that's where the Toronto Raptors really out overmatch the Wizards. I mean, yeah, but don't discredit the the Wizards bench. Sadoransky's mm-hmm. been playing well. Yep. Kelly Oubre Jr. has been stepping into his own. Otto Porter Jr. Well, Otto he's Porter been playing starts. really well. Oh, is he a starter? Yeah, he's he he got paid 121 million. Oh yeah, he got paid a lot. <laughs> I just didn't know if he was playing. Uh, Tim Frazier, not bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree though. The Raptors bench is way more well rounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, the issue that I could see is that the the Wizards are more likely to play a tight eight man rotation, mm-hmm. right? Whereas the uh, we and we've talked about this multiple times. We can go into a ten man, but realistically, we could go right to the 12, 13 if we want to include yep. Norm Powell. Yeah, Bebe, um, Bebe. Lorenzo Brown, maybe. I can't see Lorenzo, yeah, Lorenzo Brown playing play, in the playoffs. But, we, but it's in theory, he's played. Will he Dwayne Casey have the confidence to put 
our bench against the wizard starters because mm-hmm. I guarantee you they're going to be riding Bradley Beal 35, 38, maybe 40 minutes a game. Yep. John Wall probably the same thing. Mm-hmm. Marcus Morris if he's if they play him at the small uh, the power forward and he's mm-hmm. exploiting a matchup, they'll probably ride him for most of the game. So like will Dwayne Qu- Casey have the confidence to put the young guys in? Well, I think well that that would definitely be a sight to be seen. We don't know how Dwayne Casey will react. We don't know what his game plans or anything like that are. But I feel that it would definitely be a great move to run the bench guys against the John Walls, Bradley Beals. Let Larry DeMar get their breaks. Let them be fresh for this whole game. Because the Wizards are going to have to rely on their backcourt so much, as we've seen the Toronto Raptors have to do in the past. But we know that DeLon and Fred in the backcourt are very strong defenders. Fred is a bit shorter, but his lateral quickness and strength is a huge asset when guarding guarding an opponent. So if they can just absolutely wear out a bench mob press, wear out DeMar DeRo- sorry, John Wall and Bradley Beal, I think that could work greatly in the Raptors' favor if they run well, John Wall it. and yeah, Bradley Beal. Just toss him out just to, yeah, just to tire out there mm-hmm. in their front court. Yeah, just to, yeah I, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Um, or the backcourt. Sorry, the tire out their backcourt. Yep. Now, we have two other takes, I guess. Dennis, uh, Den- Dennis Smith. Mm-hmm. On the Mavericks. He feels... What? He no, plays for the Dallas, Dallas Mavericks. Is it Dennis Smith or D. Scott? Who's the reporter? Oh, Dennis Scott. Okay, I'm sorry. Is it D. Scott? To be honest, not even watching Game Time anymore. The reporter on yeah. Game Time, he okay. thinks that okay. the, ra- <laughs> the Wizards the Wizards playing with a full, healthy team, mm-hmm. All right, and both John Wall and Bradley Beal performing like the All-Stars that was expected of them at the beginning of the season... If they were to beat the Raptors in the playoff series, so in the full seven games, he wouldn't consider that an upset. Mm-hmm. All right, so, and I think that's the general consensus of most of the league. Yeah. Right, well, because a lot of people are saying, "Oh, it's gl- we're glad that we don't have to play the Wizards. The Raptors are in trouble because they have to play the Wizards." A lot of people think that the Wizards have an edge against the Raptors, right? Mm-hmm. And a reason for that, Jalen Rose puts it, he doesn't have faith in Demar Derozan's defense, so he thinks that the guys. They can score down the clutch, but he thinks that they are not able to defend. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, you can say what you want about Lowry DeMar. They've had their ups and downs in the postseason past. Obviously, DeMar isn't known as the greater defender. But if you look at the numbers, look at just how the Toronto Raptors have played throughout the season. You look at how the Washington Wizards have underperformed all year. They've been saying they've been motivating themselves seemingly every week. Yo, we're... We're going to show what we got playing the Cavs and the Celtics this week and go out and take a few L's. They, they can't, they're coming into the playoffs 3-7. and seven. The, the Wizards are a talented team, but they have just not put it together this year. And it would, I would be su- very surprised for them to just randomly you know, come together and be the team that they, talent-wise, could be. Just okay, okay. I agree with that, but okay, but okay, I bet not. I bet, just looking at the bigger picture here, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Let's say the game goes to the final minutes. Yep. Right, or even overtime, as we've seen against the Miami Heat. Right, and mm-hmm. I look at the reason that the the Raptors lost the last game of the season in overtime is because they exploited whoever Demar was uh, guarding. They took him to the basket. Right now, mm-hmm. I'm not saying Demar's a horrible defender, but that was the reason that they lost, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, they they. All right. It was also Wayne Ellington hitting ridiculous shots. That's what got them to overtime, mm-hmm. but the reason that they lost in overtime I guess was because yeah, DeMar got scored but, on every time. But right? that's, that's but my opinion. Want to combat that point, Eric Spolstra is coaching the Miami Heat, known as one of the best, better coaches in the NBA, arguably one of the best coaches in the NBA. Coaching on the side of the Washington Wizards, we have Scott Brooks. No, no, you're you're no, you're detracting from the point. The analysts, the the whole coaching staff, can obviously look at each game and be like, all right, what's the weakness in the the Raptors? And let's say maybe they don't even do that, and this isn't even a point of contention. But let's just assume, all right, that they say Demar is the weak point. All right, and the game goes to any mm-hmm. game, goes to late minutes, so the final two minutes or overtime. All right, and we have the full Wizards starting lineup up. Right, who yeah. would? Who would DeMar likely be guarding? He'd probably be guarding Bradley Beal, right? Otto Porter. You think he'd be guarding Otto Porter? Yeah, they, they don't, they'd never throw DeMar on the main guys. Okay. What is, do you think, and this is, this is to me, this is what it comes down to if it's late mm. game, all right? Yeah. Because I think that, in my opinion, 
the reason that the Raptors lost the overtime game is because they took it to DeMar. Yeah, but that's one game, right? though. That's they challenged game. him to, to step up and defend. No, this is just what I'm saying. So yeah. the, in, it, do you think, and this to me is really the crux of the series, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, correct me right now if I'm wrong, but do you think Otto Porter is better offensively than DeMar DeRozan is better defensively? I think DeMar DeRozan can contain Otto Porter, if that's what the what you're asking. I don't think we're going to lose a series to DeMar's inability to guard Otto Porter. DeMar isn't James Harden in 2013. He's not that bad. Like, he's not he's <laughs> not Jimmer Fredette out there. DeMar is, a, you know, a, at least acceptable defender on defense. Like, he's, we're not going to lose a series <laughs> for DeMar DeRozan's defense. He's been fine all year. Like, that point by Jalen Rose that I know you're putting out there, I don't know if you necessarily believe it, but it's 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 just like Skip Bayless throwing out random facts about why LeBron sucks. That's that's my parallel to it. Like, that's not the reason yeah. why we're going to lose. No, no, no. I, no, I yeah. don't think it's the reason that we're going to lose. I'm saying yeah. that late game mm-hmm. or overtime situations, I think that that's the one advantage that the Wizards could have on us. Could, yeah. Right? In, in, the in theory, sure. I, I'll, I'll agree with it, but... Personally, I think the Toronto Raptors are going to win Game One handily. I, I'm I'm of the belief that we're going to handle the Wizards very well. They might give us a couple of tough games, but they're the Wizards just mentally aren't into this series. It's kind of like in 2015. If you, it, it, it's yeah. almost the opposite, even though it's different series. But the Wizards had Paul Pierce back then, who had yeah. even though they struggled going into the playoffs a little bit back then. They Raptors they were killer. ready. They were ready with Paul Pierce keeping John Wall, Bradley Beal, and all them on the go. The Toronto yeah. Raptors. Now Paul start- Pierce still holds the opinion that the Raptors are a joke, and that even though yeah, well, we're, most we're, people would agree that they have the culture shift, he yeah. still doesn't think that yeah. it's the well, case. He still thinks they're the same team. Well, Paul Pierce is watching games, and I'm not playing, so we don't have to worry <laughs> about him. But the Toronto Raptors that season started off played really well in the regular season, and then had a collapse like Washington has had as a, going into the playoffs. That's what we had in 2015, and we got swept. We got mentally abused. It was Lowry was also injured, but it was it was just a mess of a series. And that's that the Wizards team right now is almost the parallel to the Toronto Raptors 2015 team. Their starting point guard is kind of banged up. Uh, there's been questions about if Bradley Beal can lead a team. All these all lots of questions. Lots of questions about the coaching, and there's the talent is there. The talent, don't get me wrong, if they can piece it together, this is going to be a series. But they just haven't shown me that they can piece it together. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, well, I mean, that's I mean that's certainly what we'll see. Yeah. Game one, official game one predictions record. What's the score going to be of this game? Who's winning? What's going to be the OGs play of the game? I want to hear it right now. Oh. <laughs> um, one, 101 to 99. Whoa, close Raptors, game. they're going to clutch it out. They're going to get that first win ever. Uh, OG's moment of the game. I'd say we're going to blow a 10-point lead in the fourth. Okay, okay. See, my prediction, obviously getting the the reading tea leaves and all that, I'd say the Raptors are going to win 110 to 94. It's going to be close up until the third quarter. Bench mob is going to come in third quarter blow the game out. Fred Van Vliet's gonna show on the big stage why he's the most nasty. He should win sixth man of the year. He's gonna show that tonight. CJ Miles will get his groove back and the OG's play of the game will be a nasty OG hammer over (laughs) Martian Gortat. Because that that would be just a dream to see. But let us know what you guys think. I have confidence the Raptors are gonna handily win game one and Riker thinks it'll be a close game but also thinks the Raptors will win let us know what your thoughts are on the Toronto Raptors. We'll react to this game tomorrow after the game. We're trying to make as much playoff content as we can. Keep checking out the channel. Check out the Twitter for live tweets, the Instagram for cool posts. You guys are the best. Later.